I'm Bob Brady of the Texas Rangers, and your host for the Gangbusters program. This is a strange story, extraordinary in many ways. It's a story of Herbert Noble, a man who literally had more lives than a cat. In just a moment, I'll tell you about him. Number five, six, seven, eight, nine. The nine lives of a cat are legend. But Herbert Noble had 12. And it still wasn't enough. Noble lived in a luxurious ranch house near Grapevine, Texas. One stormy August evening, his wife, Mildred, was alone in the house. She felt uneasy. Maybe it was the storm. Or it could have been some psychic warning about the future. Where in the world have you been? We're an hour late for that party now. We're building a gambling casino for a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, Herb, you're crazy. It's going to be the most fashionable gambling casino in this part of Texas. It's going to be worth uh, at least two hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh, gambling's against the law. It's illegal, yes, but it's generally approved. Casino ought to be open to uh, rich oil men, cattlemen, their wives. Look, Herb, don't do it, will you? Why? Well, we've got plenty of money. By most standards, we're wealthy. But give me one good reason. If I don't do it, somebody else would. Well, then let them. It doesn't make that much difference to us. But it, there's a law against it. But the law isn't backed by public opinion, so... Well, now, look, I'm not interested in what public opinion is, Herb. For goodness sake, don't get mixed up in it, will you? Why? Why? Well, for one thing, look at the people you'd have to oh, get mixed up with. And besides, Herb, I'm scared. I'll oh, take my word for it, will you? If you want to, you can put it down to women's intuition. Uh -uh. I can't run my life, Mildred, by women's intuition. Don't worry. Just a little thunder. Noble's gambling casino became two, then many. He was soon head of Dallas Gambling and a local kingpin, with money flooding his tables. He was closely watched, and not everyone who entered his clubs came to play. Good evening, Mr. Noble. Looks like quite a profitable night. Who are you? How'd you get in my office? My name's Tortoni. I'm afraid your guards aren't beyond temptation, which means I've invested a hundred dollars in this visit. Though actually I've come to offer you the benefit of our protection. I don't need any protection. You're not from around here. Oh, that's, that's true. But I imagine you know who I represent. Get out. Oh, that's not very courteous, Mr. Noble. And not very wise either. Mr. C. tells me the board is a bit upset by your attitude. I said no. That's final. Final. I'm afraid that's what it is. You know, the syndicate only wanted the usual 20%. But you prefer to be a rugged individualist. You're an anachronism, Mr. Noble. But at least in gambling. And no one stands alone anymore. Please, thank you. I said no. Very well, Mr. Noble. It's your life. What's left of it? Good night, sir. Gentlemen, we've heard Totola's report on Herbert Noble. As far as I can see, he's left us no choice. And as chairman of the board, I shall call for a vote. Hit. 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 It's unanimous. As Totoli is already in Dallas, I suggest that he stay on there to carry out the contract. Any objections? Very well. Let's proceed to the next item on the agenda. Oh, you're so lucky. You seem to be lucky at everything now. Maybe. Want a fresh highball? No, thank you. Stay where you are. Forget it. Sis, pay up if you don't want to be killed. Pay for what? 
protection. They hurt their racketeers. They're threatening you. Please, please give it up. Be scared out. Who are they? Don't know. Oh, look. They're doing this to you because they know that gambling's illegal and that you can't go to the police. when you don't even know who they are. Honey, I wouldn't quit now for all the tea in China. If they want trouble, I'll give them as much as they dish out. Come on. It's your play. Oh, Herb, you're crazy. were all that stood between him and the finish. This over there. Yeah, he's hiding right here somewhere. Could be in the barrel. Come on, let's get out of here. We'll shoot somebody back in a second. The killers knew they had hit Noble, but it had been too noisy. They decided to let him die of his wounds while they looked to their own getaway. As he regained consciousness, he was interviewed by a special officer. Despite bullets through his shoulders and back, Noble didn't die. You're terribly sorry you've been shot, Mr. Noble. Who did it? I don't know. Hmm? Could have been anybody. Well, it must have been somebody who was after you. Know who? Uh-uh. Well, you must have some idea. They've tried once, they'll try again. They better hadn't. This is a job for the police, Mr. Noble. Not just one man. We'll see. You're wrong, Mr. Noble. You're making a big mistake by not cooperating. I'm sorry, Captain, I can't. And that's all you say? I know you're one of the best shots in Texas, Mr. Noble. But a thing like this takes training. We've devoted our lives to it. If whoever did this knew I went to the police, they'd get back at me. Maybe at my wife. Can't take the chance. Put her under guard. Thanks, Bill. I'll take care of it. Okay. He was tough. Just how tough was yet to be seen. 38 caliber. Two mashed up for identification, even if we had the gun. Three of them, huh? Noble's a pretty lucky man at that, huh, Andrews? This time, anyway. But next time... Next time. If he was smart, there wouldn't be a next time. Why do they have to take us for fools? Why is the shore so near the ocean? It's the way it is, Bob. Yeah. Well, we know the syndicate has been pressuring Noble to join up. It's pretty obvious he said no. With him, it figures. He's a lone wolf I ever saw one, and tough as one, too. But I don't envy what he's up against. Feel sorry for us, Andrews. And all the decent people that pay off to the syndicate every day. In a hundred ways they don't even know about. Oh, of 
Only Noble would cooperate. We might be able to get a wedge in. We might be able to crack the syndicate. If... Yeah. Oh, but he won't. Yeah, it always happens. The trout starts hitting, and I get a job like this. Why don't you leave the Rangers your name and address? I'm sorry. It's careless, and I don't like carelessness. I said I... I know it. The local boys were careless. Oh, Noble's still alive. That's why I'm here personally, Beaver. To see there's no more of it. Don't worry, there won't be. I haven't goofed a contract yet, and I've had plenty. Well, that's why I hired you. Listen to this. To see the world in a grain of sand, and heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand, and eternity in an hour. That's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. We got a nibble. Shot not even noble. An alert neighbor reported the shooting. And working with the highway patrol, we immediately set up checkpoints around the area. All units were alerted and given a description of the assassin's car. Roadblocks were established at all key positions. charmed life held good. Riddled with buckshot, he was on his feet in a few weeks, when other men would have been dead. But, Mr. Noble, it should be evident, even to you, that you can't fight them by yourself. Now, suppose you let us give you a little protection. And we'll set up a few traps around your house and... and but... Hello? Hello? Shall I, uh, guess where he told you to go? Yeah. He's even more stubborn now than he was before. With that hard head of his, it's no wonder those shotgun slugs bounced off. Come on, Beaver, hurry up. Now, the dynamite, I don't hurry. This stuff is a very touchy disposition. Hey, uh, all ready to go boom. This might be a little messy, but I'll guarantee Noble don't get away from this deal except in little pieces. You better be right, Mr. Seal, have us in little pieces. Come on. No, I didn't sleep. You should have a good conscience like me. You worried about what's going to happen to Noble? My friend, I'm worried about what's going to happen to us. We don't stop that charmed life of his. That's all you're worried about. You can forget it. That charm of his will be spread all over the countryside once he steps on that star. Leave me the station wagon. I'll get the packages back. Okay. Oh, no. They're changing cars. What are we going to do? What do you suggest we do? Get out of tell Noble there's a bomb planted in his car, so please use it. we got to do something. His wife will be blown. You'll do nothing. So be quiet. Again. That guy's got as many lives as a cat. So I told you, if she goes to that station wagon, I've got to do something to stop her. I'm no woman killer. You will be in a minute. No, 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 no. Please, please, let me try. I said no. I've got to stop. 
stop her. I can't watch her being blown to bits. Then don't watch. Another mistake, Tortoli? The board of directors would like to know why. And whose mistake? Beavers? And no, sir, no. He did his job. No. No, it wasn't my fault either. Well, how could we know that they'd pick this morning of all mornings to switch cars? Yes, sir, I... I know. I know, but this man's got nine... All right, so he's got nine lives. Get him nine times. I'm sending you a specialist. Give him whatever help he needs. Just make certain that there are no more mistakes. After the death of his wife, Noble became a man obsessed with the stubborn purpose of defying and beating the syndicate by himself. He installed hidden floodlights and bought 15 watch <laughs> Bulletproof glass for the windows. Noble was trying to anticipate everything. But no one could anticipate Rayleigh, specialist in long-distance murder. No sign of him yet. I don't see how you expect to hit him from back here anyway. He must be a mile away. 450 yards. Well, I still think it's too far. Rayleigh, if you miss... I don't hire out to miss. Well, for $10,000, you'd better not. He gets set. I think he's coming out. Well, earn your money. One shot, are you kidding? Drop an elephant with one shot. Why do I need more for this? Because Noble's a freak. He absorbs bullets like a sponge. Now load it up. Make you happy? Fine. It's a waste of ammunition. Well, I'll pay for it. pierced his lungs, but again, Noble refused to die. During the long convalescence, Noble was protected by bodyguards, day and night. But on recovery, he found the syndicate was waiting to try again, and again. Good news, Bob. Relic was just killed in Oklahoma. In a fight with a truck driver, can you imagine? Well, that's one killer that Noble won't have to worry about anymore. Still think he was the rifleman in that fourth try? Can you name another killer who can drop his man at 450 yards, missing his heart by a whisker? No, but I wish we could prove more or knew less. Ask Noble. Eleven times they've tried to get him. But will he help us? Uh-uh. I'm sorry, Totoli. The board is taking it out of my hands. We all like you, you know that. And because of your fine record, the vote was to give you one last chance to fill this contract. But if you miss, the board is going to vote on you. Good luck, son. escaped death 11 times. Over 80 bullets had been fired at him. Nine of the bullets were still in his body. As if daring the killers to strike again, Noble no longer stayed inside the safety of his fortress home. But even on the golf course, he had a rifle stuck in his golf bag. Always throbbing in his mind was the knowledge that death was being prepared for him. And could he escape it again? Stops the car just about this far from the mailbox. Come on, finish digging the hole. All he needs is about three sticks. 
You got enough dynamite here to blow up a tank. The way Noble's got his car armored, it is a tank. In any case, I'm making sure for the last time. Get it covered up. We want to cover up this wire clear to the plunger. We won't leave any trace for him to spot by accident. Now, the connections are all good. They should be. You've checked them a dozen times. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling I've been through all of this before. But it better be the last time. Uh-oh. Here he comes. I just thought, wouldn't it be funny if today he didn't stop at the mailbox? Yeah, funny. Like my own funeral. Eh, he'll stop. Even Noble's luck has to run out sometime. See? Lovely. The car is right over the dynamite. Lovely. Easy. Let him get in the car. I'll decide when. I told you that was too much dynamite. At last, the end of Mr. Herbert Noble. Mr. C's gonna have good news for the board of directors tonight. Come on, let's get this gear out of here. I got a plane to catch. Ladies and gentlemen, the case of Herbert Noble is still not closed. Although several of the men who participated in the murder's attempts are either in prison or dead. We have shown you this unsolved case for a very definite purpose, to expose an incredible evil. You've all heard stories of the syndicate, both fact and fiction. Let me assure you that in neither case have they been exaggerated. The syndicate does exist. There is a board of directors who direct criminal operations of many sorts and staggering profits, and who do murder strictly in the line of business. Police know the syndicate leaders. They can name the board of directors. But that knowledge is of little value until you, the public, decide on action. Because against the power and influence of the syndicate, the only real threat is public opinion. Your opinion. Next week, another gangbusters case, taken from authentic police files and records. Until then, on behalf of the police, we invite you to join gangbusters. Gangbusters, created by Phillips H. Lord. The case you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews.